where are we grounded? Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to see everyone. That, that's a good question. I like starting off with that question. The question is, where are we grounded? So that stands again today for everyone in this room. Um, for some of us in our families, we're grounded based on tradition. We're grounded based on the way we were raised. We're grounded based on the, the, the discipline we received at an early age. Um, and as we've been going through this series, talking about different things that have kept us grounded, today we're going to focus on something that's not talked about a ton, or when it is, it's not really explained, and that's the Holy Spirit. You know, we see it when, during baptism time, you know, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, but not many people understand what that means. Um, today, we're hoping that through this process, God's spirit connects with every single person inside of this room, and we leave here changed, amen? amen? So if that is your desire, what we're inviting you to do is what we have a custom here to do here at Bowlingbrook Church. We invite you to stand on your feet right now as we lift him up in worship and in praise. Join me as we sing about that blessed assurance we have in Jesus. is my 
that's the reason we take time to sing praises and lift him up. If you're not used to church world, you may wonder, why are people raising their hands? Why are they crying? Why are they... We're doing this because we have a story of a great big God who did so much for us. So if that is your testimony, we invite you to sing this song, I Will Exalt You. I will exalt you. That's all we're doing today. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Why? You are my God. It's a very personal song. I will. things that you just said, then there is no reason for us to walk in fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. So we believe that if he walks with us, if he is inside us, that we will not have any need to fear. Let's sing that to him, not to me, because...
we're supposed to move on, we're supposed to move on. We have another song we've got to go to. We have a script that we're supposed to be following. But if you wouldn't mind pausing that script for a second here. There are things that we are saying about God in this room that I think it would be a tragedy if we left here not believing or internalizing it. One more time, my hiding place. My hiding place and my safe refuge, my treasure, you are my friend. more time just for me, even less. My hiding place, my hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure. Now think about this part. My friend and king, anointed one, he's most holy. say these words in a way that we believe because because you're with me because you're with me people ask where does your confidence come from simple because you're are you worried about tomorrow no no need <laughs> I will not So I will make room for you. I will prepare for you so you don't feel that you can't live here. Please.
Let's end with this verse here. I find space in I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my word. Every single day. Jesus, you're my now. Today we're singing, Jesus, you're my number one. Dear most kind Heavenly Father of our God, today we are striving to make that decision. It's been so easy to put so many other things in front of you. Um, the truth is we... When we list down our list of priorities, we always say God, family, then we take all these other things underneath, but we always say God and family. But when we look at our schedule, but when we look at our schedule, it sometimes seems to show something different. When we look where we spend our money, it sometimes seems to show something different. Um, but Father, today, Lord, I'm asking that for anyone who is willing with their heads bowed in this room, Lord God, Anyone who is willing that something happens during this time, if it hasn't happened already, before they leave these doors, Lord God, they make a decision saying, God, moving forward, I'm not just going to do church as usual. I'm not just going to show up. I'm not going to do life as usual. I'm not going to do marriage as usual. I'm not going to do studying at school as usual. I'm not going to do work as usual. No, moving forward from here, Lord, let us be able to make you an actual priority. You said if we seek you first that everything else will be added on. You said you stand at the door and you knock and you knock and you knock and you knock and you're just waiting for us to let you in. So today, Lord God, before we leave this room and for some of us right now, Lord God, allow us to open ourselves to you, submit to you, and let our lives be changed by you. In your name we will always pray. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible says, I go forward and I cannot find him. I go backwards and I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he does his work, I cannot see him. And on the right hand, I cannot find him, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Anybody want to be pure gold in his sight today? Just want to be purified. Well, if you have a desire to stand purified before God, then you need one thing, essentially. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For the Word of God says, I will purify the sons of Levi with a refiner's fire. John says it this way, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but there's one coming after me who will baptize you with the Spirit and fire. I believe in these last days that the greatest want and need of the church is to receive the fire the fire that cleanses you from the inside out. Yeah, a lot of people step into spaces of prayer and worship and they are focused on the outside in. But we serve a savior that does not look on the outward. For the prophet says, God looks on the heart. And he is doing an amazing work in the planet even now, even today, even in your life, he is wooing and he is calling you to receive the fire of God so that you can come forth as pure gold. Happy Sabbath, Bolingbrook. What a privilege it is to be here among this faith community that is doing so many relevant, out of the box, innovative and biblically grounded things for the kingdom of God. I love how so many people sometimes look at new things and immediately seem to land on the fact that because it's new, then it's somehow unholy. But the Word of God says, behold, I do a new thing. Even now it springs forth. We still serve a God of dreams, not just the God of memories. 
See, the God of memories calls you to remember things in the past, but the God of dreams causes you to think about some things that has not happened yet. And I stand before you as a servant of the Lord Most High, or as Daniel calls him, the revealer of dreams and secrets. And I believe God is giving Bolingbroke beautiful dreams. According to Joel chapter 2, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And people start dreaming things and having visions of things that he still wants to do in the earth. Uh, my name is Michael Polite. I currently serve as a chaplain there at Andrews University, just a stone's throw from here. And I'm excited because I got what I believe is a divine assignment. Somebody say divine. Turn around and tell somebody say, say some assignment. Say divine. Turn around and say assignment. Listen, I got a divine assignment because my favorite topic to talk about is the Holy Spirit. And when I received the invitation here, they said, hey, we're, we're in this Grounded series. We are trying to frame the fundamental beliefs in very practical ways so that people can not only understand them but apply them to their day-to-day -day schedule. And we are wondering if you'd be willing to talk about the Holy Spirit. I said, am I willing? This is a gift. So excited to not only be here, but to have the honor to talk about what the internationally recognized writer and speaker Francis Chan calls the forgotten God. The forgotten God, the work of the Holy Spirit, I want to suggest might be the most powerful and influential work going on in the earth right now today. But a lot of people will cry out to Jesus, they'll pray to the Father, but they will forget about the beautiful transformational work of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to thank your pastor, Pastor David, as well as your ministry director for extending the invitation, uh, Leilani Langdon. And without further ado, I would love to jump into the text for today. How about that? Let's look then at, we'll go ahead and turn to Psalms 51, reading verses 10, 11, and 12. Psalms 51, verse 10, 11, and 12. We're going to take that on in my reading from the New English Translation, but feel free to follow along in whichever version you are rocking with here today. That is Psalms 51, looking at verse 10, 11, and 12. If you can see it, say, I'm there. Sounds good. It says, create for me a pure heart, O God. Renew a resolute spirit within me. Verse 11, do not reject me. Watch what he asks for. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Verse 12, let me again experience the joy of deliverance. Sustain me by giving me the desire to obey. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to speak to you underneath the title, Teeth Are Like People. Teeth are like people. Heavenly Father, may everything that is being declared here today be in alignment with your will and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Teeth are like people. So about four years ago, I joined a very infamous club. And I use the word infamous on purpose. Because as a member of that club, I actually received some of the harshest discrimination uh, from discriminatory looks to discriminatory glances to discriminatory uh, I, was, I was set up to be discriminated against. And I know that sounds a little weird because especially as an African American here in the United States of America, you think I made reference the discrimination of society, the discrimination of prejudice and racism, but that's not what I'm talking about. I actually experienced when I joined the 30 with braces club yeah see you get the privilege to laugh and chuckle but uh, I was the one who was in the club and and as I said and I will highlight this once again I have never been discriminated against as much as when I joined the 30 with braces club first moment of discrimination was when I walked into the orthodontics office and I was surrounded by individuals somewhere between the age of 13 and 9 years old and it was as if I was breaching some secret society that I did not belong in because I was two maybe even three times older than the other clients in the office I mean immediately I walked in and it became silent it was like I smelled I mean uh, they they 
don't even know me, and yet they just stared at me with a furrowed brow, making sure I knew that I was a little bit too old to be in such an office. I mean, it was a harrowing experience, I kid you not. Not only in the office, but as I walked around the grocery store, or maybe glanced a smile at some other uh, person running a cashier in a department store. It was almost as if it's like, wait a second, uh, how old are you? then maybe you need to hold your hand over your mouth when you talk because you're a little bit too old for braces. Oh, but how many people know that you're never too old to receive some level of transformation? How many people know that? You're never too old to raise your hand and say, I need some things to be set straight. Uh, uh, You're never too old to look in the mirror and say, I want to improve a little bit. See, I think one of the things going on in society is that improvement is, is somehow the real estate of the young. But I have news for you. You actually can teach an old dog new tricks. It is possible for a veteran to get an upgrade. I'm trying to suggest that no matter how old you are or how how young you are, you're always eligible eligible to receive or walk in transformational change that is being offered to you. And so here's a photograph of, of my before and my after. See, I believe when you go on a journey of transformation, you need to be intentional about logging where you were so that when you get to the end, you can look back over and say, my goodness, some things have changed. Oh my goodness, I have received some improvements. My Lord, I like what I see now in comparison to what I saw before. And and notice, even the weather was in agreement with what I wanted to do. I mean, when I first got my braces on, it was dreary outside, it was cloudy, no sunshine. As soon as I got them off, sun was out, there's blue skies. I mean, I look at the before and after and I just say, well, thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Uh, uh, the, The writer of the hymn puts it this way, through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come, but grace has kept me safe thus far and grace will lead me home that writer's talking about improvements and as I look at this photograph I'm just elated as I see where I was and now where God had brought me through this orthodontic journey because you're never too old to seek transformation as I went with braces And one thing I decided to do was to make sure I questioned my orthodontist, Dr. Chad, there in South Bend, Indiana, at Harrington Orthodontics office, putting in a plug, because I love that brother, because he he walked me through a process of transformation. And, And when I got to Dr. Chad's office, I was always the most inquisitive of his patients, because I was destined to leave that office with not only a straighter smile, but with a better understanding of what it takes to change things, specifically to change stubborn things. And so I asked Dr. Chad, I said, Dr. Chad, why is it that teeth grow crooked? Why is it that some of you even now are hesitating to smile because you're like, oh my goodness, uh, I'm a little embarrassed. Is this brother saying everybody needs to get braces? No, that's not what I'm saying. Stay focused on the revelation of the Lord because what I'm actually trying to do is share with you my own vulnerable journey of transformation. No shade on anyone in here. But I still had to ask the question, why do teeth grow crookedly? And it was interesting how he broke it down to me. He said, well, it always starts with one tooth. See, teeth are only programmed to do one thing, and that's to touch each other. When a, when a tooth is developing behind the gums while you're in utero, and then you come out your mama's womb, and maybe four to six months later, you start seeing some things break through, they have been developing to do one thing. They are wired to stick together. Now, here's the issue. Teeth are so in love with intimacy and closeness, they're so in love with proximity, that if one tooth grows out of alignment, the other teeth around that tooth will also move out of alignment just to stay close to one another. 
Now, I love the programming of teeth because who would want a tooth growing over here and another tooth growing an inch over there? I like the fact that they want to stick together. But notice, teeth are much like people. In many ways, we understand what a tooth is grow going through. Understand that sin and shame, guilt and dysfunction are all outgrowths of misplaced relationships. Notice that when you look at the Garden of Eden and you watch the fall of man, all that enters into our experience is offline relationships. Every sin that you deal with, every shortcoming failure, every growth area that you are wrestling with in your day-to-day -day life is a result of some type of dysfunctional relationship dynamic. It might have been a relationship dynamic that was passed down through your genetics. It might be a relationship dynamic that you, that you saw and experienced through the nurture of your upbringing. It could have been through adolescence while you were at school or maybe in adulthood as you looked at the world and say I got dreams but then some relationship things went down that turned your mind back to a, a hurt pain emptiness loneliness I don't know when it happened I don't know how it happened but I do know every human being on the planet is struggling with some type of relational dysfunction and what happens is because we value staying close to one another we are willing to move out of alignment just to touch we're willing to move out of alignment just to experience some intimacy. We're willing to move out of alignment just to avoid loneliness. Teeth are like people, and people are like teeth. Dr. Chad didn't know it, but he preached a sermon, a profound sermon to me the day I asked, how do teeth become crooked? And he says it just starts with one tooth making a crooked move, and that crooked move has a domino effect in one's mouth to where the other teeth, the other teeth just to stay close, follow suit, and make other bad decisions. So maybe now you could get with why David is crying out to Jesus in Psalms 51 and verse 10, why he's crying out to Yahweh for Yahweh to do something for him. When he says, create for me a pure heart, O God, and renew a resolute spirit within me. What he's really saying is, there's some crooked things within me. I don't know how to fix them because it's almost as if I was born this way. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that for a little bit because a lot of people don't want to admit in these times that there are certain proclivities and dysfunctions that we are born with. David goes on in the psalm to say that I was born in sin and shapen in iniquity. I came out of the womb with certain proclivities. I came out of the womb with certain propensities. I came out of the womb wanting things that I should not want. Paul says it this way, the stuff I want to do, I don't do them. The things I don't want to do, I end up doing them. I got an issue. It's somewhere deep down inside of me, so deep I can't even reach it. I need a master who has a word that can cut down deep into the life of a person, a two-edged sword that can cut down even to the marrow within us. There's a dysfunction growing inside me that I cannot change. I can't stay close to God because I'm trying to stay close to people I can't stay in alignment with his will because there's some things that hurt so bad that I'm willing to get out of alignment to remedy because teeth are like people people are like teeth and David understands I got a problem way deeper than behavioral modification there's something in my very nature that I was born with that draws me to come out of alignment but you know what I'm excited about is, you know, the, the most quoted verse during my 30 with braces journey was, oh, don't worry, pastor. You know, he promised to make the rough places plain and the crooked places straight. You know how church folk try to encourage you with backhanded compliments all the time, you know. And then they try to put scripture on it to sound holy as they do it. I'm like, man, y'all are making fun of me, right, to my face. And you're acting as if Jesus is laughing too, you know. Listen, we do serve a God that can put crooked things straight. For Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God that works in you to give you the will and the ability to do what pleases him. 
I like that because a lot of us are attempting to modify our alignment through willpower and discipline. But that's not what the Bible suggests is going to lead you to lasting, sustainable transformation. What the Bible says that it's actually God that wants to do something on the inside of you that will put you back into alignment. In drops Dr. Chad again. Dr. Chad, tell me a little bit about the science of braces. How is it that these braces are going to align my crooked teeth? Because you just told me they have a flawed nature. They are willing to move out of alignment to stay close. Dr. Chad preaches another phenomenal sermon. He doesn't know it, but he preached an evangelistic campaign over two years. It's a two-year-long evangelistic campaign that just bless my soul. And here's what he said. He said, well, what we're going to do for you, Mike, is we're going to give you what are called Damon braces. Somebody say Damon. Say braces. Now say, I don't want them. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, I went through it. I know why you don't want them because it really hurts. Okay, these aren't the wire braces of old. It's, it's an innovation in orthodontic technology to where there's a door placed on every tooth. There's a door. And then there's something inserted to the door called shape memory wire. Now, what's so amazing about this wire is no matter how much it contorts, it always remembers its proper shape. So what happens is they place the wire in the doors and then they shut the door behind the wire. So now what the wire does to the tooth is it brings the teeth into submission to its original form and fashion. And so as the wire is in there, the teeth are like, I don't want to move. But the wire says, oh, no, you coming with me today. Because I remember how I was made to be. I remember what my original shape was. I remember how things were supposed to be. Therefore, I'm not going to let you compromise me. I'm actually going to compromise you. And so that's why Paul chimes in there in, in the Corinthian, in Galatians, when he says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's not I that live but Christ lives in me what Paul is saying is I'm now attached to something that is now willing to pull me into proper alignment it's not through my willpower it's not through my effort it's not even through my discipline to study the 28 fundamental beliefs there is a power that's now attached to me that will not let me remain in my dysfunctional crooked state it's going to pull me into the shape that I was supposed to be in that I was made to be in it is going to restore the joy of salvation it's going to remind me that I was fearfully and wonderfully made that although sin has created some crookedness there is a power if attached to us that will pull us into proper alignment and what I love about the Damon Brace's journey is the strongest wire is not what they start with first. The wires that they start with first are actually the ones that are a little thinner, that give a little bit more give and flexibility. And I love this. I asked Dr. Chad, Dr. Chad, why is it that you just don't start with the strongest and just pull this thing into place? He said, because pulling teeth into alignment takes patience. And if you pull them too fast, you will act actually mess up their roots. Oh, there's another sermon that he posited. I told there are people that God wants to bring here to Bolingbrook. And yes, he has positioned you to introduce people to an entity and force that will pull them back into proper alignment. Because teeth are like people and people are like teeth. The issue is many of our churches pull people too fast, which actually messes up their rootedness and groundedness in the kingdom of God. They get discouraged. They get fed up. They start believing even that they can't do it and that God is asking too much. Maybe what God needs in these days are less churches that are pulling and more churches that are patiently waiting. <laughs> willing to walk beside you as you grow. Because if teeth are like people, then transforming people takes time. And maybe that's why Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the 
branches. It takes a little time to grow. It takes a little time to extend. It takes some time to bear fruit. Yes, eventually you must bear fruit. For the Word of God says those branches that do not bear fruit are cut off from the vine. But notice, fruit doesn't grow overnight. There's a process to the fruit bearing. There's a process to growing. There's a process to becoming productive. And he does it little by little, over time. Patient, compassionate, understanding, merciful, and filled with grace. For we are saved by grace through faith, and not of our works, lest anyone should boast. It is that our Father is a gardener. And he cultivates and nurtures us, much like an orthodontist cultivates and nurtures a smile. Little by little, step by step. But here's the secret that I want to give you as we start coming down the home stretch. Notice that in the verses we highlighted, David really wants one thing. In this moment where he feels distant from God, unworthy to even be in God's presence, and he's fearful that his soul's salvation has been compromised. Notice in Psalm 5111, he says, do not reject me. Do not take your spirit away from me. Do you see that there? You want to know why he says that? Because even once your initial process of aligning yourself with God's will is finished, the process of transformation is not done. I want to repeat that. Even after your process of becoming realigned with God's will is finished, your process of transformation is not done. And this last sermon that that Dr. Chad gave me, and he even ended it with an appeal, uh, was on my final day when I got my braces off. What was interesting is I came in for a routine assessment, and all of a sudden he says, I think you're ready. Let's take them off. And I was like, no. <laughs> the process is not finished yet, Dr. Chad. You said that I have two months left in my treatment plan. He said to me, but Mike, because you've been so willing to follow the process... The process is actually taking hold a little faster than we had planned. And although you didn't think you had arrived, I want to tell you, I can't get that much better than it is. It would just be now a, a, a food catcher to, left, to leave your braces in. You are ready. You are prepared. You have completed your process of realigning yourself as it should be aligned. And I was a little bit scared. I was a little bit frightened. But boy, wasn't I excited to get some affirmation that someone had seen my effort, was acknowledging my work, and was now letting me know that I've gone to another level. I can't wait for the day when God just posits in my spirit through a fellow believer or maybe through an angelic messenger that he's proud of me, that he sees some beautiful things in my life, that he sees what I've tried to do, that he's noticed the sacrifices that I've made. Anybody waiting for those words, well done, my good and faithful servant to be declared but notice you don't have to wait until you get to heaven Jesus is proud of what you've been trying to do right here on earth for he says occupy until I come he says the harvest is ripe but the laborers are few there's a work to be done right now and he is proud of you for going with the process he knows you're not perfect he didn't ask you to be perfect he asks you to be willing. God honors willingness even when there's not perfection. Dr. Chad said, you finish. Let's take those braces off. And then I smiled in the mirror for the first time and thought I had fake teeth. <laughs> I thought I had some false dentures or something. Whose smile is that? That can't be mine. You see, that's the thing about transformation. It's hard to tell what's really going on while you're going through it. Because transformation doesn't look so attractive all the time. It, it, it looks like, ooh, what's in your mouth? That's what it looks like. What's in your life? What is God trying to realign? 
And you know what? Some people said, I never really noticed the crookedness of your teeth until you got braces. It's because the process of transformation does require some level of exposure. You can really tell people's teeth alignment when they get those braces on because the brackets now highlight where the tooth is and you now see where it should be. And yet on that day, I looked in the mirror and I said, that don't even look like me, but I'm glad it is. And I rolled my tongue over my teeth for the first time. <laughs> and I said, now brother, that's a smile to hold on to. But remember, I said, Dr. Chad preached this final sermon to me, and he gave an appeal. He said, congratulations, put a certificate in my hand, and here's what the certificate said. You are now a lifetime retainer wearer. <laughs> no, Dr. Chad, uh, I don't understand what this certificate is. This should be graduation. This should be, uh, you have arrived. Congratulations, you finished the course. Congratulations, your smile is pristine, but that's not what it said. It said, congratulations, you are now a lifetime retainer wearer. Why? And here's the sermon that broke through for me and explained to me why we must have the Holy Spirit in our life. He said, because your teeth in their current position actually think they're out of alignment. Ooh. He said, your teeth think right now where they are is strange. And they will fight for the rest of your life to get back to where they were. Because where they were is their normal. Where they were is their comfort zone. Where they were is where they're trying to be. Where they were is where they prefer to be. So what I have to give you is a tool that will make sure what we just accomplish in your life remains, sustains, continues, and moves forward with you. Because years from now, you'll look in the mirror and no one will ever be able to tell that you ever went through this process of transformation. Does not the Bible say in the book of Peter that as a dog returns to the vomit and as a pig returns to the mud after it's been washed, so do we as human beings return to our old sins. Listen, you cannot fix yourself. God fixes you. But even after you experience some success in the spirit, understand that your tendencies have not changed that you still got an issue, that your nature is still flawed. And that's why Paul declares, who can deliver me from this body of death? Oh, wretched man that I am. What he's trying to suggest is, I have gone through the Bible studies. I have seen some improvement. Some stuff is shifting in my life. I've seen myself do some marvelous things for the kingdom of God, yet I still feel something's off inside. My nature still wants to go back to what it used to be. Mike, your teeth don't know they're better. They actually think they're worse. Did you hear that? Dr. Chad said that although everyone else will see my light shining now and say there's been an improvement, my teeth will always feel out of place. And here's the warning that I want to give to all faith communities that are really trying to build this comfort zone, this, this beautiful community for believers. I believe in that. But understand that the process of transformation should never be too comfortable. There's always, there's always with the believer some feeling that I'm out of place. There's always going to be some feeling that, that there's something in me that wants to express itself that's no longer expressing itself. There will always be something with in the believer that says, ah, I miss the good old days. Or as the people of Israel said after they crossed through the Red Sea, I miss Egypt. Can we go back? Because although they were free, they didn't feel like it. Although they were in better alignment with Yahweh, they didn't feel like it. Because teeth are like people. And people are like teeth. Dr. Chad said, I got to give you something that will maintain the change. Because, Mike, you don't have what it takes to maintain the transformation that just took place in your life. The realignment that we've been working on for years, 
will go back to the misalignment of yesterday. I got to give you something. And so here's a picture of my friends. One is called top, the other is called bottom. And I got to put them in for eight hours a day because my teeth don't know the better. And now you understand why Jesus looked at his disciples. And the Bible says in the book of John that he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Now you know why he says, I'm going to send you a helper and a comforter, one who will guide you into all truth. Now you know why he said, no, don't go out and preach for me yet. I need you to remain in Jerusalem, for there you will receive power, and you will be my witnesses into the uttermost parts of the earth. Now you know why the apostles would show up in a place, and even though people were baptized with water, no one would clap their hands at that. No one would celebrate or send the conference a spreadsheet showing who had been baptized by water. They would stand back and say, something is off, something is wrong. And in Acts chapter 8, they sent for Peter and John and said, they've been baptized, but they have not yet received the Holy Spirit. God has brought them back into alignment, but without a retainer, they'll end up worse in the future than they were when they first came. God, please. Allow us to lay our hands on them because they need something to maintain the change. And if you want to know a grounded reason why you need the Holy Spirit, just look in the mirror and notice how many times that you go backwards, how many times you struggle to remain in the faith, how many times you're challenged with these sins that often do beset us, how hard it is to lay aside every weight. If you want proof that you need the Holy Spirit, just look at how easy it is for things to get crooked again. Because teeth are like people. People are like teeth. And that's why David says, don't reject me. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Because the greatest gift that was ever given to human beings is the power of the Holy Spirit. Some would say the cross. Some would say the cross, and I want to suggest that the cross is is amazing. It's a pinnacle mountain experience. But notice that Jesus' name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. There's a next level. For if anyone is in Christ, they become new creatures. What God wants to call Bolingbroke to today is to move away from a faith that is content with being with God and move to a faith that wants to be in God. For if anyone is in Christ, doesn't say if anyone is with Christ. The disciples still struggled with backsliding when they were with Christ. Don't you remember? They lived, walked, breathed, and ate with him for three years. They had an orthodontic experience that was three years long. And yet as soon as they were tried, I don't know him. I'm going to betray him. But then the book of Acts says that they came before the Sanhedrin after they received the Holy Spirit. And they no longer asked with a question mark, were you with Jesus? No, the Bible says with an exclamation point, they say, it is clear that these men have been with Jesus. What happened? What was the difference? The difference is, at first they only had an alignment process that was incomplete. The cross ushers you into alignment, but the Holy Spirit maintains the change. And I want to suggest, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that what the believers of the last days need most is they need the retainer. For the Bible says, hurt not the earth until my people have been sealed in their foreheads. Well, Paul tells us what that seal is in Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 4. He says, grieve not the Holy Spirit by which you have been sealed. 
I feel it in my mouth when I go some time without wearing my retainer. My mouth starts to get sore, and I know what it means. The teeth are trying to move back to the time of dysfunction. We got to put on that retainer every day. Because I feel it when I've gone just 24 hours without my retainer. And so I close with this. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. The helmet of salvation and breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith. Carry the sword of the Lord, which is the word of the Spirit. Put on the belt of truth. And make sure, make sure you have your feet covered for the preparation of peace in the earth. We all need a retainer. That retainer's name is the Holy Spirit. And you must receive it if your change is going to last. So at this time, I want to invite everyone who feels convicted in their heart they need, that they need to rededicate themselves to not only belief, but inviting the Holy Spirit to be a part of your day-to-day -day experience. For Luke chapter 11 says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more will your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit if only you ask? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So right now, I want you to bow your heads, and in the privacy of your own heart and mind, I just want you to take time to say, Father, I need the Holy Spirit. Because teeth are like people, and people are like teeth. I'm prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. I'm prone to leave the alignment that I love. But I believe you can take my heart, Lord. You can take and seal it. You can seal it for thy courts above. Give me my retainer. Please don't reject me. Don't take your spirit away from me. But restore the joy of salvation so that I might worship you. Treasure of my heart and of my soul, in my weakness you are merciful, redeemer of my past and present
We pray that as you leave these doors, that you remember to daily invite the Holy Spirit in to your heart and in your life. And if you are looking for transformation, we have decision cards in the back of your seat, in front of your seat, or by the orange wall. And these decision cards are you taking that next step into experiencing the transformative power of Jesus Christ. You can either join our interactive Bible study starting point, or you're saying, you know what, I'm ready to take, to make that decision final and sure through baptism. You can fill out that request on your decision card. We want to invite you to continue to join us for our summer series, Grounded. We have three more weeks. Next week, we have June Price. She is an amazing speaker, powerful spiritual woman of God, and we know that she will deliver a word that will revitalize us and draw us closer to God. As we connect in a, in a family and community, the reality is that many times people come and go. As we create spaces, God calls people away, God draws people in. And so today we are wanting to go ahead and do our final vote on the people and family members who are leaving our community as well as joining our community. And so right now I wanna accept, wanna ask for a motion to accept these transferring out and those joining our family. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, email us at bowlingbrook, info at bowlingbrook.church. As we get closer to the uh, school 
coming and starting and summer ending, we have a special event coming up. We have our back to school pep rally. And it's gonna be for children anywhere from the ages of four all the way through middle school. We're gonna be experiencing that on August 18th. And we're gonna be spending some time learning about Jesus and then jumping and, and having fun outside on our field. I'm gonna tell you something. The things that we're gonna be on the field um, have our pastor, Pastor Dave, and our finance director competing as to who's gonna do it first. So you wanna bring your kids to experience that day. They're gonna also be collecting boxes of cereal for our food pantry so no child goes to school hungry. In connection to that, we have, um, we wanna remind you that on August 10th, we have our family and friends experience. And if you don't know what that is, it is an opportunity for us to leave these walls and create spaces in our homes, in our community, to draw people in to the God that we know. And so we're gonna have you take a look at uh, a snapshot of what that is. So those of you who've been part of it, if you want to join a family, go ahead and fill out a join a family card by the orange wall. As we give, part of what we do here is give of our time, give of our resources, and we want to tell you about an exciting opportunity that connects to our back to school uh, experience. There's a uh, nonprofit organization, uh, Six Feet Underground, that helps to serve the whole person, mind, body, and soul. And they have decided that they are going to provide our uh, children in this community backpacks for school, to go back to school. And so we're asking to raise, let's get 100 backpacks, and each backpack, which includes the backpack and the, the basic initial supplies for each child, costs a total of $16. $16, now that's, that's about half of your week's Starbucks bill, okay? So I think that we can take one, and we're asking that if you feel inclined and impressed to give and to support our community children, who are in need and do not have supplies for school, that you take a giving envelope, you go online, and you put $16, maybe you can do two backpacks, and you put back, back to school backpack fundraiser, and it will, we will be able to collect and purchase backpacks for the kids in our community. We always wanna let you know where our finances go and ways to give. You can give online, you can text to give, you can give at the giving stations. And as always, we like to update you as to where we are on our month to date goal so that we can continue to create spaces for the people that God misses the most. As we end this morning, let us pray together. God, we just want to thank you for sending your son and then sending the most wonderful gift of all, your spirit, to continue to fill us and lead us in our day-to-day -day life. As we leave this place, may we not, not leave your presence. May we choose to be in you daily and to surrender what we have to you, trusting in you alone. We love you in your name, I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath and have a wonderful week, family. And on that note, family, you are officially dismissed. You are blessed, so blessed to have the opportunity to make sure the person next to you, if you've been sitting next to them and you don't know their name, make sure you say hello, you say what's up. If you don't know the person behind you, say hello, say what's up. Have a great week. We'll worship and praise on your way out. Be blessed. Have a happy Sabbath.